In this video, I'm going to show you 11 design tricks for 3D printing that everyone needs to know. First, we have my favorite new design trick. This is the 3D printed thread. You can make these threads with the program you've probably heard of before, Fusion 360. It's a really easy CAD program that's free for personal use. And here's an example of what you could do with 3D printed threads. This is a completely modular desk organizer. The pieces simply connect together securely with these 3D printed threads. It's by far one of the best and easiest ways for connecting 3D printed parts together. Next, we have the C-clip, which I have to give a huge shout out to my good friend Jay at JBV Creative. You could use a C-clip to securely attach anything to an axle. The best part about the C-clip is it takes up practically no space. Next, you could use this design trick to force your slicer to make your parts stronger. Here I am back in Fusion 360, and if I just cut this small cylindrical hole in this part, it forces my slicer to make extra walls inside of the part making it stronger. Let's say you want to make one part fit into another. While this could vary between printer and printer, a good rule of thumb is 0.4 millimeters of extra space between parts. Did you know you could easily create your own gears in Fusion 360? However, they kind of hide it inside the program. Instead of it being underneath the Create Objects dropdown, you have to go to Utilities, Add-ins, and then you can find the Spur Gear add-in. Feel free to copy my gear settings. They work really well for 3D printing. And if you've been following my channel for a while now, you probably think I'm obsessed with gears. Now let's say you want to print a large object like this cube. With the default settings, it takes an hour and 47 minutes to print and uses 114 grams of filament. But if we simply change the infill to lightning, we could save both time and material. Now it prints in less than an hour and uses only 38 grams of filament. Now what if we're printing a part with large overhangs? Here you can see traditional supports in green. They're an absolute pain to remove. Simply switching over to tree supports can make your life a whole lot easier. I'm using bamboo slicer, but most slicers have tree supports. But did you know that not all overhangs require supports? If you design something to have perfectly horizontal overhangs, a 3D printer can bridge across the gap. And you might be surprised how far a 3D printer could actually bridge. Now here's one of my favorite advanced design techniques. This is a print in place live hinge. Basically the entire object prints like this. In the print in place live hinges just work. Here's exactly how it's made. It basically works by using a conical pin that fits inside of a hole. You can see there's enough space between the cone and the hole to allow the pivot to work. And now I could simply just mirror this design and now I have a working hinge. I don't have time to go through all of these steps in detail in this video. If you want to really dig into the weeds of all of Fusion 360's features, check out my most popular course, Fusion 360 Masterclass, and join over 2,000 students who have already taken my courses. You can find more info in the description of this video. Another cool thing you could do with 3D printed threads is instead of just using them to connect parts together, you could actually use it to create containers. This is a custom donut shaped container, and it uses a thread to secure the lid onto the base. Once again, this video is not a detailed tutorial, but if you're really curious how to make a container like this, here are the steps. Create a big cylinder the size of the container, and add a small cylinder for the lid. Next, add a thread to this container and scale it in the Z direction by 2. This will make it better for 3D printing. Next, we'll need to subtract this thread shape from the container. And now let's make the container a lot deeper. We can simply select on these two faces and drag it down. And for the final step, all we have to do is add a cap for the top of the lid. Of course, this is a very fast overview of the entire process. In my detailed lessons, I go much slower and take you through each individual step to make it really, really easy. And after some practice, you can make some really cool custom containers like this. And for the last 3D printing design trick, did you know you could use the print in place hinges to make your own custom chains? It's pretty much the same exact design as before, but you link a bunch of them together. I use this method to create the chain in my marble machine project. I hope these 3D printing tips and tricks are helpful for you during your 3D printing journey. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help. And if you really want to dig deep into Fusion 360, check out my Fusion 360 Masterclass course. I occasionally offer some pretty steep discounts. Check the description of this video to see if I'm currently running a big discount. Best of luck on your 3D printing journey. Thanks for watching and happy printing.